system training seminar. And what we're doing here today is trying to give all the uh, local Canadian teams, Southern Ontario teams, a good foundation and a good basis so they can start the 2009 season with our brand new controller. Okay. At the 2008 World Championships, first announced that they would be migrating to a new control system. Why did they do that? I don't know. And that's one of the questions that we will not be able to answer for you. We'll talk about that more in a bit. Robots in Bob Prime. Some of you may recognize this robot. Many of you may not, since it's missing its huge ramp structure that was on the back. The ramp was removed because we have room for the control system, which we'll talk about momentarily. Uh, recreate our basic Kelly operator code from 2007 in C++ this time. Recreate the autonomous mode using the brand new camera, which you can see right here, using C++. And then, when we submitted our test proposal, we were given the choice of programming C++ or LabVIEW. We were chosen to be one of the C++ expert teams. But we knew within our local community there would be a lot of teams who wanted to use LabVIEW. And as part of becoming control system experts, we took the plunge and we learned LabVIEW, MPI, our robotic site. You're going to hear that term WPI often. That's Worcester Polytechnic University Institute out in Worcester, Massachusetts. And they sponsored Team 190, who was the alpha test team. There were two alpha test teams, and they received controllers during this year's build season. And they were developing with the robot and all that. So they, Teams 190 and 15. The new system weighs approximately four and a half pounds more than the old system. I'm sorry, I didn't do it. <laughs> And there's reason for it to wait more. This is an industrial controller. This is a hopefully very rugged system. It provides a lot of functionality. So it's, it's different than the IMI system. You have a wireless router on your robot now. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of modules. So the natural question is, will the robot weight limit increase? I don't know. We're not on the game design committee and we have no advanced knowledge. But the indications we've received is no. This may, there may be some challenges this year. So we gotta make sure that all the teams in Southern Ontario are here to support each other on this task. When will the new controller be available? Soon, for those who prepaid. So, for those who don't know, First has made an offer to all teams. If you pay for your control system before kickoff, they will send you, sorry, if you pay your registration for your first regional event, for most of you, the Greater Toronto Regional, for some of you from Finger Lakes. Um, you will be, and for basically none of you want to move, um, you will be getting your control system. You've got to pay the $6,000 and it won. Is there a new speed controller? Yes, there is. It's known as the Jaguar. There will be four in your kit of parts, as far as we know. Can we still use Victor's? Yes. As an FPGA that you can program, you don't have full access to the FPGA in the first year. You hopefully first will be opening that up so people who are into embedded controls can really get their hands on that. Programming, like I said, C++ and LabVIEW, wireless debugging, all the developers from 11.4 who have been working on this love the wireless programming. Because no longer do they need to drive the robot back and plug in a tether cable. You can just send code to your robot. Or chase it with a laptop. Or chase it with a laptop. <laughs> Well, we figured that question would be coming up. Uh, can you talk about it? I can't. I, well, I can talk about some of it. I can talk about what I know. Because the first time we started programming wirelessly, Pat realized, hey, if someone else enters this network and logs into the IP of the robot, which is not... This year, there will be three modules and only three modules available to teams. The analog input module, the digital I.O. module, and the solenoid module. Uh, if there are more slots. In the future, you may, there may be, and created something really neat here, which has what are known as WAGO connectors, which once you get your wire in there, it's not coming out, which is a good thing. It may be USB devices. So you can buy a USB joystick, this is one of the uh, HID guys, plug it in, should work. Some joysticks you may plug in, you may ask this stuff. Go to the first controller strike, bookmark it, check it every so often. Pat, do you want to create an MRC link for that? And finally, the beta test form. Relays. 
There are a couple of dedicated power connections for uh, special parts of the robot. So there is a uh, five volt power for the, uh, the camera. It's filtered power, so hopefully the camera shouldn't have too many issues, although we've noticed a few. There is a special uh, 12 volt power for the uh, wireless access point, the wireless router that's used instead of in Canada this year. And there's one 24 volt connector, uh, basically a clamp style connector. Uh, I've got a couple of photos here, it shows roughly how to use them. All you need is a little screwdriver and just, you know, bare metal wire. You don't have to solder it or, you know, crimp connect on or anything like that. Basically, jam a little screwdriver in, you pry up, that opens the connector, slip the wire in, take a little screwdriver, and it's really going to circle back to the wireless access point. Uh, the power connector on it right now is a little bit iffy. Hopefully, first we'll have something better uh, by the time the real season comes out. But right now, it comes out of the radio fairly easily. For the router, you can use a straight through cable. It doesn't like, uh, the camera is a special cable. You gotta use the crossover, which we'll get to in a few moments. But this one here, I'm pretty sure you can just use any old straight cable. Next slide. The Axis camera is pretty new for this year. Uh, this cable over here, as you can see, it is a different color. As Ian said, Make sure that you plug in the power correctly as well as the PWMs. There pretty much no reverse polarity protection on them at this time. They may be in the future, we don't know. Right. Speed controllers. The way you're going to be hooking these things up is through the sidecar on the PWM board. Now there are only 10 on this new system, but with the fact that you can use two sidecars, you can double that if need be. Um, the other thing is, there are jumper pins next to it. For normal speed controllers, you do not want to use these jumper pins. As I'm going to get into into the next slide, um, we use the jumper pins for the servos, which will provide the power through the middle pin, so we can actually use the servos. And with the sorry, with the speed controllers, we can. For now, we're going to be using the PWM connection for both IFI and the new. Uh, that's why I said you have to be careful with them, because they do stick out, but you can see it from there. Uh, they're basically the same style PWM connections on them, so you can go through, make it, make your own button box and have a great time with that. Next slide, please. The robot controller, the old system we had the I. The way the IP address is set up is that uh, for a team number that's XXYY, uh, the X gets split up and the Y gets split up. So, for example, for 1114, uh, all our networking equipment would be on 10.11.14. something. So, for team number one, you don't actually have to install that new network, but there's some real time libraries which have to be installed. And essentially, what you have to do is connect the computer directly to the Compact Rio with the network cable. If you do it over wireless, it's probably not going to work. And um, first, we provide a file which contains the firmware. And uh, generally, I find that the best source of documentation when I want to know how to use class is to look at the .h file and uh, see what methods pass so that I know how to call it. Okay, first off, the robot itself, uh, we're going to use a class called Iterative Robot, which is provided by WPI. They provided a couple of other ones, but they're not that great, and we really recommend wheel drive and um, deciding if there's input to it, whether your motors are inverted and what your actual PWMs are for it. Um, this is a warning to any teams that are using um, LabVIEW this year. There's one really huge confusion with how things are set up, and it's these guys here, these enumerations. Um, originally, when the LabVIEW code was written, everything was zero-based, meaning that your PWM outputs are zero through nine, not one through ten. So you have to realize everything is zero-based. Late in the game, um, the developers were asked, please switch this to one-based because that's how our C++ code is and what can